Christ in heaven. I will be in the kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your honor. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom. How? This is Hope Channel Zambia Television that changes lives. Welcome to Pray Without Ceasing, a program designed to encourage one another in our happy times and sad moments. Now, today we're going to look at image and prayer. I'm your host, Esna Tsikazwe. My guest is Pastor Johnny Namwako. Pastor, welcome to the program. Thank you, Esna, and welcome to our highly esteemed viewers. We're so excited, we're so glad once again to come together with you as we you know relate on this particular subject mm -hmm. as we interact and get more ideas and insights as we pray together what is your understanding about the image well i, I think uh, from the dictionary point of view as not uh, um, the image uh, suggests the visual representation of something mm -hmm. Okay, so the visual representation of something or the likeness of something, an object that sort of reflects another ob object, that's an image. So, so to speak, we, we, we can even give, you know, um, examples of shadows, you know, uh, an image of someone, sort of. But, of course, it must come almost like... Um, uh, a, a physical, you know, image, something that really uh, uh, entails some tangibility, okay? So the image is just the visual representation of an object. So you can have an image of a person, you can have an image of this and an image of that. But it's not the actual thing. It is the representation, it is the visual uh, or physical representation. When you, you people who are in the media space are talking about image, uh, sometimes you may talk about, you know, uh, the, the color picture on a TV screen. Sometimes the image is not very good. Sometimes the image is clear. But it doesn't mean that the image is the actual person there okay, okay so, so the, the image is basically the representation uh, of one thing by another when we look at in the bible we okay. discover that we human beings we are made in the mm. likeness or in the image of god mm. what is understanding when it comes to the bible presentation okay, okay so, so um you're asking, asking about, about the image, image of god, god. Mm -hmm. a man Okay, okay, so uh, that, that particular expression uh, is one of the complex theological, you know, statements, statements in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the image of God in man, what is it? What, what is, is the representation? What, what does it entail? Okay, so um, in theology we have something we call the Imago Dei. Hmm. Now, Imago Dei is Latin, that suggests that this is the image of God. Now, what that means is that God is not going to take, or God is not a physical body. As we know, the Bible tells us that God is spirit. So, uh, the image of God given in man has a context, okay? And the context is that God has shared some level of his intelligence to human beings. God has shared some morality in human beings. So there's a sense of parameters. Human beings cannot do this. Human beings cannot do that. Only those that are in the animal kingdom do this, not human beings. So that is the image of God, the dignity, the respect, 
and the leadership, the spiritual nature in man comprises the image of God that God has shared to mankind. I believe that some people out there who might uh, uh, have joined us for the first time, yeah. and then or maybe heard about the image for the first time, especially those people who have never read the Bible before, yeah. does it mean that we look the same like God? Uh, not necessarily, uh, as, as I indicated in the preamble. The Bible says God is spirit. No, you don't touch the spirit. The spirit does not exist in body form. The spirit is the spirit is invisible. Okay, but then God shares His attributes with us. We'll see later on how God also decides to manifest to come into the image of man. <laughs> okay, in the incarnation, as you know. So, but but basically. What we have, we are possess the attributes that God decides to share within the limited parameters. You know, God gives us the spiritual nature. That's why we can worship. Even when you don't worship God, but every human being is a worshiping being. We are a worshiping. We are also moral beings. Much as we love each other, we protect each other. You know, we know that that is informed by morality, where you, you cannot just do something anyhow. And then we also have rationality, intelligence. You know, so that intelligence to be able to guide, to provide, to be able to do that. All that is comprised in the image of God. Okay, so the image of God comes as a complex, uh, you know, uh, term that speaks to those, those things, things that God has uh, given to us. Wisdom, spirituality, knowledge, leadership, and so on. Yeah. Okay. One would uh, argue to say or talk about when Jesus came here on earth, mm. he looked, uh, he had his own image. Yeah. But the Bible also tells us to say, when you see me, you see my father. Yeah. Does it mean those who saw him or those who will see him in, in his second coming, who actually see God, or yes. that is the direct, or is it the exact image okay. that so, God has as well? So, so that's, that's why we said the, at the, the very onset, this, this is a very you know, huge theological, theological uh, um, subject, discussion mm -hmm. and subject, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's, it's, it's relevant, relevant mm -hmm. by the way. So. so uh, at creation, God is invisible, God is spirit, and yet creates man in his own image. All right. So from there, we are saying that the image of God that uh, you know uh, God put in is not maybe just reduced to the physical attributes. You know, where someone will say, ah, uh, you know. Don't laugh at how ugly I am. I am in the image of God. So it's depicting that, okay, God is also like me. So sometimes we sort of don't understand, you know, the, 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 the image of God. So we said, ah, no, uh, even if I look ugly, even if I do that and so on, I'm in the image of God. It's true, we are in the image of God. But does it mean that what you have just said, mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly, exactly how God is? So God is spirit. So when you come to John 1 verse 1, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you run through to 14, you now see one of the three persons in the Godhead, mm -hmm. Jesus, who was the Word, mm -hmm. used that creation, deciding to manifest himself as a human being. So now God gets a body of a human being, puts himself in there, and calls himself Jesus, and says he will live among us. So God revealed himself to us through the person of Jesus Christ. Okay. So right now we can relate better with God because he has moved part 
of himself, put himself in a body so that now we can have Jesus to talk to. We can now physically interact with Jesus. Even when we go to heaven, we will see Jesus just the way we see each other. Because God has taken a body so that we can relate better with him. That's why you see the Bible is very good. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his own one and only begotten son. What that means is that God surrendered his son so that he can appear to us as the true representation of God himself. All right. So when we see Jesus, we are seeing God in a physical body. All right. We are seeing God in the physical body. Okay. Yeah. Today is the um, first of the day is uh, Genesis 1.27. Yeah. It says God created man in his own image. Mm-hmm. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, yeah. he created them. Mm-hmm. The second one is Colossians 1.15. It says he is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. The other one is uh, Isaiah 40, 42, verse 8. It says, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will, I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images. Mm-hmm. So, Pastor, we will start with Genesis 1, verse 27. All, all right. right. So, so Gen- Genesis 1, verse 27 is the first time in the Bible that God uh, gives his image Mm. to one of those that he created. I must be quick to mention here, Esnat, that uh, maybe as a way of understanding the subject, who was created first between man and animals? It was... Animals. It was animals, then man came later. Then man came later. Yes. All right. So, so God created everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. The last thing to create is man. And his plan to create man was so that man will have dominion over everything. Okay? Man will rule over everything. So God loves his creation. God loved the world that he created the human being to take care of it. There are times when we are overrated, we even want to overtake God. When God created us to have dominion, okay? Sometimes we even think we are smarter than God who created us for a specific reason to bring glory to him by taking care of the environment. You see that. So God decided to give mankind his image so that human beings can have rulership. Instead of him now leaving heaven to come and take care of the animals Mm. here on earth, to come and take care of the, you know, the sheep, the cows, the dogs, and everything. God says, ah, why should I do that? Let me make a human being who has attributes of intelligence, spirituality, and that's the beauty about God. When he created human beings, he puts in man something that a man can relate directly to God. It's like a software. Whenever you pick, there are certain phones right now, whenever you pick the phone, it has a face recognition. Mm. So the moment you pick the phone, everything opens. It opens up because the phone recognizes the face. Whenever a human being, you know, comes into existence, they come with a software to recognize God. Okay, of course, we'll talk about how sin interferes. That's how some people even begin to question the existence of God. And so God put in human beings the attributes of wisdom, knowledge, intelligence, dominion, rulership. Whoever is created by God 
has been created with dominion to lead, but yet others have now relegated themselves. So uh, that is what Genesis chapter uh, 1, 27 talks about. It talks about God deciding to create man in his own image. But before I can uh, move to the next verse, there is the subject of male and female. And on this platform we have always said, that whether you are a man or a woman, you are created in the image of God. Are we men? You know, women. Here the Bible says even women are created in the image of who? God. It means that the same attributes that a man has, the woman has. If we talk about the image of God in man and we say the dominion, leadership, we talk about spirituality. We we talk, talk, because, because God, God says, says, let me, I'll create man, human beings, to have dominion. You get that? Mm -hmm. So, men and women have the similar attributes of the image of God. Okay, so we're not talking just about maybe, you know, the physicality. That's where we make a mistake because we are looking, oh, does God has, have beards or does God have eyes? Of course, there are depictions that God has eyes that reach everywhere and so on. Again, that is the image of God. So these are representations that we have that sort of picture who God is. Yeah. Mm. So number, uh, verse number two, mm -hmm. okay, Colossians 1, 15. Yes. He, now, he here is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1, 15, to our viewers. Mm -hmm. He is the image of the invisible God. You remember where we started? Mm -hmm. That God is invisible, God is spirit. Mm -hmm. And yet he allows Jesus in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. 14. And dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory of the one true God. Now what this means is that God has decided to now incarnate part of himself to exist with us. And now Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So when you see Jesus, you are seeing a true reflection of the image of God here on earth. The firstborn of all creation. Meaning that Jesus takes preeminence. Your image and mine has been damaged by sin. But Jesus' image is perfect image of the true God. It means Jesus is the firstborn. Jesus, Jesus comes as first. Because in the beginning, because of John 1. Yes. Oh, okay. So he, he, Jesus now becomes, comes to take center stage, you know, as the first in the line of creation. Mm -hmm. So before Adam, there is Jesus. Okay. But what we are saying in this context is that there is no creation without Jesus. And God gave Jesus the ability to create. So he's the owner of the creation. He's the author of creation. That's why it says in the beginning was the word. The word that was used to create was Jesus Christ. And that's why it says he is the firstborn of creation. Because now he takes a body of created beings, yet he is the creator himself. So God in this case was not uh, mm. selfish enough to no. just bring the firstborn to take dominion all over everything. No. He first gave the dominion to, to man. man. Okay. Yeah. So when man came, when, when man fell, you see, mm. uh, you know the story <laughs> of... Um, redemption estimate is mm -hmm. very important mm. for us to know yeah god gave dominion to adam and eve mm -hmm. the people you and me mm. were the posterity of adam after giving them authority say for instance you leave your children at home man eh? mm. you tell them 
I'm leaving you. I'm, I'll be going away for one week. Mm. So the mealy meal is there. The bread is there. Uh, then a neighbor's child decides to come. Mm. Okay, and say, now you listen to me. I will control you. And the neighbor's child now takes control of, and you give that neighbor's child permission. Mm. So that's what human beings did. Adam, when Satan came and said, Ah, did God tell you to not to eat the me? I'm telling you, just eat. Mm. So the neighbor's child comes and tells you, no, just eat, you won't die. Mm. So the moment they obeyed the devil, they gave away their dominion. Ah. So they no longer have dominion. Why did Jesus come to restore their dominion? Jesus came to give them back the control mm -hmm. over their life. So right now, you can say, Esnat, this thing of saying, well, what happened? Why did you sin? Say, ah, it's the <laughs> devil. No. No. It's God, us. When Jesus came, he gave you back your authority. Mm -hmm. He gave you back your power to choose. The moment Jesus died, he says, it's finished. Mm -hmm. What was finished? It says, man is no longer a slave to the devil. Okay. Mm. They have been... Okay. So Jesus now takes charge. That's why now Jesus comes, as I said, he's our savior and he's the firstborn of all creation. Mm. And through him mm. only can we survive. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and then Isaiah, we go to Isaiah 42. Yes, so Isaiah 42. Eight. Mm. I am the Lord. That is my name. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will not give my glory to another, mm. nor my praise to graven images. Mm -hmm. Now, graven images uh, in the Bible, uh, we know that um, people in the uh, ancient Near East mm. used to carve things, you know, mm. like uh, actually you see it now, you know, in the polytheistic uh, religions, uh, those religions which have many gods, mm. you know. Like, uh, you know, our friends, the Buddhists, mm. they have many gods, mm. and actually they can make something and worship it. Okay, they can maybe make something out of clay, they can make something out of wood, or out of metal, mm. and worship it. You know, so God is saying, know my praise to graven images. Mm. So even just making something and you worship it, representing God, God says no. That's why in the first and the second commandment, God has forbidden worship of any other God. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Uh, uh, number two, thou shalt not make for thyself any graven image. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. So even if you say, ah, I just want to build this chi animal so that I can, through it, mm -hmm. I can worship God. That's why even making a, 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 an image of Jesus and kneeling to that is a sin. Mm. It's a sin, you know, because God says, I will not share my glory with another. So the image, uh, uh, you know, uh, characterized in those, uh, you know, um, uh, things that we, we make on ourselves. They, but also, these graven images can mean anything that you respect more than God, mm. it falls in this category. Pastor, does it, does it mean even the people I know, mm. there, are, there are some people who would even buy those images from town, Yeah, they go and place them in their homes. And so worship. Does it mean uh, they can even remove, they can do away with them, is it okay? So, the question is, when you get an image in town or something, what would you like to do with it? Because you would find that they, some of them, they even, you know, uh, brand it very well. Mm -hmm. They even put verses there, Bible verses. Okay. So people would just hang those things there, but I don't know if they worship them. So the, the challenge is that image, mm. are you worshiping it mm. or not? So, if you get a picture of yourself, you put it there. 
or someone draws a portrait or maybe you know like now you see monuments of Kaunda yes if you go to worship that you have sinned mm. okay if it's a monument of Jesus Christ you go and kneel down you have sinned okay but if they just put it there this is to for us in the thing mm -hmm. I mean you know so we have places like uh, is it is that uh, Rio de Janeiro mm -hmm. uh, in Brazil where you have that big tower mm -hmm. you know uh, indicating uh, you know Jesus mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, if they kneel before that mm -hmm. it is sin okay so here it says I will not share my glory with another nor my praise with graven images so that thing no matter how beautiful it is it's not God okay so when you make something to worship it and to offer your allegiance to it that is sin before God I've seen people worshipping uh, human beings mm -hmm. for example you are a church pastor then yeah. I come to you I yeah. worship you yeah. pastor Namwako I worship you in mm -hmm. person yeah. then when you die again they go to your village they go to your grave grave mm -hmm. they start worshiping you mm -hmm. is that correct it's not it's not actually um, this is why we're talking about uh, you know the aspect of the image mm. you know the devil what he wants is you can worship anything except God mm. and if he struggles to stop you from worshiping God he will just say ah you can worship God but you can also worship God mm. the devil doesn't as long as he knows that when you do that you are sinning mm. all right so when you talk about the images uh, of other people and worshiping them it becomes sinful to us human beings before god mm. so we try as much as possible to avoid worshiping people going to their grave sites to worship or doing this and that we try to avoid to do that Okay, mm. our viewers, in case you're watching us for the first time, this is Pray Without Ceasing. Please do uh, send us your messages so that we may be able to pray for one another. We may be able to pray for you at the end of the program before we go. Right now, we're going to take a short music. <laughs>
Welcome back. We are still looking at the image and prayer. Tell us your experiences about the image, what you have learned outside there, or what you know about the image, or just in the Bible itself. Maybe you have an experience you can share with us by texting us using the message with using the number which is scrolling on your screen. Pastor. Yes, yes. We see that according to um, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 49, mm -hmm. it says, just as we have borne the image of the earth, we will also bear the image of the heaven. Mm -hmm. Does this mean we will look the same in heaven? All right, so <clears throat> we, 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 you mean that we will look just the way we are? Yes, but in a, because the Bible says in a twinkling of an eye, mm -hmm will change okay yes so does it mean the same image we have will look for because uh, again we have learned that when we go in heaven for mm. example my father died mm. so when i meet him in heaven i'll be able to recognize him yeah. how will i recognize that it is you pastor Namako? okay so uh how it is is that is uh, that when we go to heaven mm -hmm. uh, one thing that will be very sure is the fact that um, we will recognize our loved ones, mm -hmm. our relatives, we will know them. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will not fundamentally change, okay? Mm. But maybe those defects uh, that are a result of sin will be phased out. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you don't have legs, in heaven you have legs. Already? Yes. Okay. So we will rejoice with you because that mm -hmm. is an effect of sin. Mm. Okay. If you don't have eyes, you're mm. blind. The day that Jesus comes, you will be able to see. Mm. So that time it will be full restoration. Mm -hmm. All the bad things will be flushed out. Mm -hmm. Good things will be brought in. Mm. So don't ask me if you're going to be taller than the way you <laughs> So that, that, that uh, remains to God. Mm -hmm. But, but what, what, what is very certain that mm -hmm. we know mm -hmm. is that when Jesus comes, the lamb will walk. Mm -hmm. He gave us a, first step, the, 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 a foretaste of that. Mm -hmm. When he walked on earth, he showed us that the blind are not supposed to be blind. They mm -hmm. must see. Yes. And when Jesus comes, every eye, even Shall the see. eyes that don't see, mm -hmm. will see him. Okay. It means that there will be full restoration. Okay. All the dominion of sin will be phased out, will be removed, okay? Because now the owner of perfect life is in full control, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, when we go to heaven, we'll be able to recall, ah, it's not mm -hmm. good that you have made it here mm -hmm. by the grace of God. And uh, so we'll be able to see our, you know, children, our mm. wives, husbands, and mention that, uh, except that our bodies will change. will change now. We will not be dying. Mm -hmm. We will not be, you know, we will not have those bad feelings, you know, where you are crying, you know. Uh, and so the Bible says God will wipe away all the tears from our eyes. Mm. We'll no longer be able to experience what we experience now on earth as a result of sin. Yeah. Away from the topic, will marriage be there in heaven? There will be no marriage, as So we will just we'll be... just recognize, we'll just live like, oh, we are all angels. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's why, you know, in the, in the question that uh, the disciples uh, asked Jesus, uh, so if you have a wife and your wife dies, and you marry another. Mm. Which one of the two will be your wife? Yeah, and because that's where the confusion comes yeah. in now. <laughs> so Jesus answered, in heaven will just be like angels. We're uh -huh. all living together mm. happily mm. and so on. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I hope our viewers are learning out there. Mm. Okay, our viewers, right now we're calling in for sponsors in case you want to sponsor this program. To continue running on this channel, we we ask that may you please kindly sponsor us by coming through to our offices here in Osaka, Zambia, right on Bama Road, corner of Bama Road and Independence Avenue. That's where we are. Pastor, we are calling in for sponsors. Yes, yes, this is good time for you, uh, my brothers and sisters out there, to partner with us. Mm -hmm. 
if you know someone who would like to partner with us, or even yourself as a child of God, you want to make a lasting contribution to the kingdom of God, why not come to Hope Channel Zambia here at the corner of Bama Road and the Independence uh, Avenue. Come and partner with us. Let's move this gospel to the far ends of the earth, but begin with us uh, here uh, at Hope Channel Zambia. If you are away from Lusaka, Zambia, we, you can easily call us by using that number which is clearing on your screen. We pray that you will be able to make it so that we can keep this program running. Pastor, yes. why, the way we, we, we look today in our natural ways mm -hmm. and the, uh, the beauty that we add, does this mean that the image of God is still there or maybe we rub it off? Okay, so um, there are two things involved in there, mm -hmm. okay? There is one understanding that when God created us, He created us perfect, mm -hmm. all right? When God created us, He created us perfect. Mm -hmm. So meaning that there was nothing bad, okay? Mm -hmm. When sin encroached, then we started seeing our natural beauty bad this not not necessary mm -hmm. that beauty started phasing out ah. people started now growing old mm -hmm. faces started becoming wrinkled and so on and so forth mm -hmm. all right um, but still God in his wisdom maintained the natural beauty mm -hmm. which ought to be appreciated okay mm -hmm. now what this means is that uh, when you see that you are dirty. Don't be complacent with the debt. Go and bath, clean yourself. Hmm. If you know that you're not smelling nice, find something that will remove that smell and put. Don't say no. This is my natural smell. Hmm. You know I, I must smell well and so on. But what is not acceptable according to the Bible? Do not adorn yourself, uh, you know, uh, to extremes like the way, you know, Paul addresses the women uh, uh, in the Bible. Adorning themselves outwardly, meaning with gold, cladding themselves with gold and silver and everything and so on. But you need to have the inner beauty that emanates, that shines, because you have decided to be a child of God, all right? So the world, unfortunately, would even get injections to remove the skin pigment, hmm. okay? They will put cosmetics, they will change the color of the hair, and so on. That's not what we mean. But bathing and cleaning yourself and applying some lotion, you know, to just smell nice, to look okay as you interact with other things. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going, now if I see you, Esnat, I say, ah, but Esnat, you wear black. Mm. What happened to your skin? <laughs> then there, there's a problem mm -hmm. because now uh, you, you have gone beyond, you know, you, you don't appreciate that which God has given you at that given moment. You know, God is a God of variety. And that's why there are people who are black, black. There are people from Sudan who are like black. And then there are people who have a browner skin. All that is God's doing. And he has allowed it until the time that he brings his own dispensation. But until then, let us avoid the destroying of our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. When you inject yourself with those uh, pigment remover, remember that life continues. After a few years, you look like you were bent. Sometimes mm. you look like, you know, your cheeks. Mm. You know, there's something that went wrong uh, because you went ahead and destroyed that natural beauty. Even though it's marred by sin, we agree. Mm. 
you know but then appreciate the fact that you are beautiful the way God created you the way God has allowed you to be in existence you don't have to destroy yourself in trying to change how you look others inject themselves so that their body figures can uh, you know appear in a certain way uh, that one is going to extremes just take a bath look good comb your hair you know brush your teeth you know you you are okay as a child of god but does it mean also the people that influence mm. others to do those things because somebody can not just wake up sometimes mm. and say okay i've decided to do this mm. does it mean also those people who influence us to do certain things are the causes of this well you can't blame them mm -hmm. because some of them are influenced by other things mm. you know there there are other players that uh, you know are involved in this the devil himself has a group of his people who uh, you know don't believe that the, their bodies are the temples of the holy spirit think about something the bible says no piercing of the body think about so what good will it do to tattoo your whole body or to prick to the others who are pricking all the face with the rings and uh, you know things then you ask yourself, this is self-inflicted pain. For what? There is no beauty in that. Mm -hmm. If God had wanted the rings on us, he would have he was going to put rings and uh, chains and you know, poke your head and uh, put but he decided to create you play. Okay? That is so it is fine to look good to dress well and so on mm -hmm. but remember when you go to extremes those things that uh, the bible talks about body piercing mm -hmm. god is against that tattoos god is against that okay mm -hmm. so be plain and this thing of bleaching and doing this thing uh, I think it goes against the principle of self-appreciation and saying that I was created in the image of God. Hmm. Yeah. What is the role of the church in teaching people to have the, the image or about uh, the image? Yeah. So the first thing uh, that the church has to do mm. is to... Um, I actually, I, I must mention to you, Esna, that this is actually in our fundamental doctrines, mm. you know, uh, understanding of the nature of man. Who is man? Mm. Man was created. Man is the creation of God. How does man live? What does man eat? How does man exit the world? All that is in our teaching, in the fundamental beliefs. So, the image of God in man must be guarded jealously, mm. okay? Mm. Not only should we only take care of the physical aspect, let's also look at the spiritual aspect of it. Because whatever you put in the body of God, whatever you deal with that affects what God intended the, His image to be. When Jesus came, he says, I came that they may have life and life more abundantly. Okay? Mm. If you read John 10, 10, uh, the, oh, well, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. destroy. Like now we are destroying our bodies. Mm. But Jesus says, I am come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Mm. Meaning that it is the interest of God now to make sure that every human being lives well eats well you don't destroy your body choose the best food for your body and your good health so that and many other when you put them together then you conclude ah the will of god is that we live perfectly in his presence hmm. yeah okay interesting how do you pray in line with the image okay so um 
when we talk about the images that um, and prayer mm. it is a very exciting subject because it borders around my being vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the being of God mm -hmm. you must understand when you kneel down to pray that there is already an established communication. Jesus simply said, ask and it shall be given you. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, there's a text, I think we, we, we'll read it the next time we meet. If God takes care of the sparrow, mm -hmm. how much more those that are created in his image? Mm. Okay, mm. if God takes care of the grass and the rain comes to water the grass, how much more us who are created in the image of God? Unfortunately, we doubt God. Mm. We think that God doesn't care for his image. That's why we take matters in our own hands. We even destroy the body that God himself knows why he created it that way. Hmm. So it's extremely important, Esna, to make sure that we understand this principle. The principle that is here at play is that when you pray, please understand that God has opened all the doors. He has said, knock, and the door will be opened. Hmm. Why did he give you that blank check? Hmm. He said, open. Knock and the door will be opened. Seek, you will find. Mm. Because you are special to God. You know, uh, Jesus gave an example of the unrighteous judge. He says, you know, there was a widow who went to the unrighteous judge and kept bothering him and asking him to, for help. This man was not interested. But later when the man said, ah, this woman will bother me and they, you know, she always comes in. You know what? <laughs> this particular unrighteous judge gave justice to this woman. But Jesus asked the question, now, how much more will God mm. in heaven take care of your needs? Because he's righteous, remember? Mm. So he's righteous, he's not unrighteous. So uh, the moment you open up to him, as his image, you have a direct connection. He already put a software in you to connect with him. If you don't use that software in a prayer, the devil will use it so that you worship other gods. That's how other people, instead of asking wealth mm -hmm. and wisdom from God, they go to the devil and connect to the spirit world. Mm -hmm. They use that avenue created by God Instead of talking to God, they use it to talk to the devil. Mm -hmm. So always when you don't pray, you affect the original intention of God to communicate with you. So we encourage, that's why Paul says, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Pray without ceasing because that's the only way you get the proper connection of you as the image to the honor of the image was God. That's when God will supply all your needs. God will find, ah, my son, my daughter knows me and she loves me. And, you know, we are in communication, you know. So it's very important to understand that principle. Okay. Mm. Okay, Pastor, any last words that you have for us today? Well, um, uh, I think uh, the last thing that perhaps we can say here is that, um, mm. you know, uh, when we talk about the image of God, mm. uh, each one of us must, well, now, whether you have physical defects, mm. you know, whether you feel that, Pastor, I'm blind, mm. I am lame, mm. I'm not so beautiful, mm. that's fine. That's fine, you know. You may not have the looks of, uh, you know, a supermodel or whatever, but you possess the image of God. There's something that God has put in you that he wants to cherish. 
No matter where the devil places you, remember that you're still very important to God. Connect with God in prayer and you will not regret. Most of us, we relegate ourselves just because people have a different look on us. Mm. You know, people think that we don't look very good. People, so we begin to believe that, ah, therefore even God doesn't like me. Mm. No. There's a reason why God gave you those physical features now. Mm. Maybe to help you to cross over through the difficult times in this world, to be able to go over temptations and so on. Sometimes, if you had other features, perhaps you'd even miss eternal life. But God decided to give you that so that uh, He can preserve your spirituality. He can preserve your life. And this is why the Bible says, no temptation has ever come to man, which is uncommon to man. But for every temptation, God gives you a way out. And in no temptation is bigger than your ability to overcome. So we all have these challenges, we all have these difficulties, but the question is, are we able to be able to resist the temptation of the devil, to tell us that we, uh, we are not created in the image of God? And maybe I must also mention that there is the aspect of what the children are learning in class. Hmm. Some are taught that we evolved. We came from monkeys, mm -hmm. apes, and zingerthropus. You know, talk about those kinds of things. And even giving human beings uh, an evolved name that now we are called Homo sapiens, mm -hmm. meaning that we have developed up to a certain. No. Mm -hmm. Human beings are created directly from God, they are created intelligent. They are created with integrity, they are created with communication, they are created with wisdom, they are created with spirituality. All that comes in a package called the image of God. So we all have the image of God. And actually you have reminded me of one thing. Mm -hmm. I learned that as well. And so when we came to grade uh, Seven, eight, I think grade eight, eight nine, while we're seven. taking RE, yeah. you find that the, the Bible talks about something else, mm. science is talking about yeah. something else. So you start now contradicting yourself to say, yeah. so which one do we believe? Exactly. So mm -hmm. I feel mm. the church aspect is important yeah. because you literally know exactly what is exactly. happening and why, where we came from. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so Pastor, due to the time, we'll not look at our inbox. Yeah. We'll, we'll go direct into prayer so yeah. that we shouldn't run out of time. All right. Thank you very much. We will pray. Father in heaven, what a privilege to approach your throne of grace and mercy. We are so delighted, loving Father, that you could bring us here to interact and to talk about your goodness you have invested in the image. Father, many of us who were created in your own image have forgotten how important this image is to us and we have sold out to the devil. Please, dear Lord, we pray, remind us how important we are. There is your son who is blind your son and daughter who are lame, whatever condition your children are, we pray that, dear Lord, give them the true reflection to understand that they are very important to you because they possess the image of God. Bless us through the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, our viewers, this is where we come to the end of the program. Pastor, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Sister Esna. Okay. Thank you. Do join us next Monday. And remember that we also come on Thursdays here at Hope Channel Zambia with our program Pray Without Ceasing. Next, we'll see you till next time. It's bye for now. Our Father, who art in heaven, in thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give 
forgive us this day and our day. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, 